I'm the Dark Bob, and I'm sitting here at the uh, E3rd Steakhouse in downtown Los Angeles with two of my favorite artists, Lynn Falks and Lisa Adams. And we're going to eat. And if you can handle watching that, then good luck. But I was remarking to Lynn on my way down here, I, I moved down here in the 70s to live, and I'm just amazed, you know, when I see these fancy restaurants and so on, there was just nothing downtown. We made Al's Bar, that's what, that's what we needed to do. And then there was Al's Bar for a few years, and nothing else, and then Gorky's, and I don't, I don't want to start getting in because nobody's going to care or remember, but well, it's amazing the, to see downtown now. They had the LA Institute of Contemporary Art move down here in the 80s, and they thought... But they that were, wasn't until the 80s. They were on Robertson in know, the 70s. I know, but they thought it was really going to jump. You know? In right. the 80s, yeah. Right. I got here right. in 87 in and it didn't jump. What? Right. It had a little burst around 80 in yeah, the early no 80s. No supermarket, though. But no, still no supermarket. And, uh, and nowhere to go and nothing to do but look out for your. Al's Bar. Uh, yeah, Al's Bar. We sat around one night. It was Mark Kreisel, who's the Al's Bar guy, Woods Davey, Bob and Bob were sitting there, and we just invented Al's Bar that night. You did? Put all our pictures up. You did? There. Yeah, all the artists that we all had our photos hanging huh. up there. Because, and Mark had an empty space, and we had nowhere to go, is what it was. We were all bourgeois, middle class art kids, you know, coming from college or whatever, and in a, in a hellhole. <laughs> Jeez. Do people still live in the American Hotel upstairs? I don't know anymore. I, I don't know why anyone would ever want to live there ever, but it was a horrible, cheap place. And Oh, maybe Mark's watching this. It was a great place. I <laughs> love that place. And plus he had the American Gallery in there, which was one of the first. Oh, yeah, I remember you that. You know, there were a few galleries that started. Kirk de Goyer opened up down here. and uh, John Milan, what's that print house? Cirrus? Cirrus. Opened his thing down here. And uh, I, well, I, I left in 96 because um, we were all evicted. Where were you living? Uh, seventh place. Seventh uh -huh. uh, off of Santa Fe. Right. And then we all got evicted right. because Modernica bought our building and threw us all out. We had 30 days. It was horrible. Well, Lynn's making all kinds of crazy noises when he eats this. What's, the, what's going on with no, this? It's just kind of hot. I'm not Is really, it hot? Uh -oh. I'm not really a hot, yeah. a hot person. Really. Okay. Um, well, I was up in Topanga. I know. You were living the good yeah, life. Yeah, so I didn't day. even, except for playing right. my machine at the L.A. Right. Institute down there. And they stole my hubcaps at the time. I remember when I... You know, and so that's why nobody came down here. Everybody was afraid to come down. When you came, yeah. you had your hubcap stolen when you came to well, Leica I, down here. Yeah, when I performed, right. It was like, you know, and uh, and then all of a sudden they thought the whole art thing was going to go, and then all of a sudden it just went, Bleh, you know. But I could see because nobody on the West Side wanted to come down with all the homeless people no. and, the, mm -mm. and the people stealing stuff, and you know. Uh, no, my my studio was a slum basically, and we shared a right. A bathroom. Five people shared a bathroom on the same floor, yeah. and um, oh. and the collectors would come down, and the first thing they'd say is they'd look around like just wide-eyed, and they, and they said, "Do you live here?" And I'd say, "Yeah," and they they couldn't believe it. Right. And that was their last trip down. Yeah. First and last. People didn't want only. to come down. Mm -hmm. Well, it's sure fancy now. My God, there's all kinds of these so are you. little. Oh, well, you know, I'm a, I am, <laughs> I've become a gentleman over the years. <laughs> the, well, wait a minute. I've always worn, I was wear, Bob and Bob were wearing suits downtown. I mean, yeah. I've, we always, That's been, I've always been a suited guy. In yeah. fact, this is an original 35-year-old 30 30 Bob and Bob tie. Hmm. Means something to me. But no, well, you always wanted and, to be Dean Martin. I don't remember that. Well, you know, I feel that's a, an aspiration worth considering, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you kind of look like Frank Sinatra a little. I do. No. A little bit. Uh, no? I think I look more like Frank Sinatra. You do look a lot like Sinatra. Well, yeah, actually we do. <laughs> you know she kind of does. No, 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 I could see that. Yeah. How come Lisa's not sitting in the middle? I don't know, because they seated uh, because, us like a... Uh, well, a, because you're the lead. No, it's, you're the 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 lead. it's a balance. See, I have the light. Oh, yeah. Oh, there right. you go. All yeah. right. You're the lead. All right. The lead? Yeah. We're, we're, you're lead Falks. We're looking, we're looking we're to you. Yeah. Well, you have been a leader. Well, In well, my world, you've been a leader, Lynn, since I first started making art, period. Oh, well, thanks. How long have you been making art? Uh, Shit. Shit. It all depends Ooh. on what you said. I started, when I, I started painting when I was 18. 
Uh -huh. Where were arts. you when you were 18? Up in Yakima, Washington. Uh -huh. And did you know about fine art? Was there a museum well, up I there? Well, you didn't know anything in Yakima. Right. I know. Right. I, so I got the book on, the only book I ever stole from the library, uh, Salvador you. Dali, uh, The Secret Life of Salvador Dali. Hey, yeah, that's what jump started my, and I, me too. It's the, only, it's, the only, it's the only book I still own. Have from that yeah, mine was the persistence of memory. I was ten years old. I cracked open no, the book. Well, I saw persistence of memory, and I went, "You mean people do things like this? Yeah, I, I'm yeah. there." Oh, really? Yeah. That was the first so book you stole. You... Huh? Well, I I moved around. The parents were running from rent, I think. So right. we moved all over the place, all over the U.S. That's but but um yeah, when I was ten years old, I cruised through the library, saw the book, and I thought, "Wow," because I'd been doing that kind of thing. I mean, not surrealism, but I've been drawing, painting weird things, you know. And then I saw that, and I said, "Oh, there, there's someone who someone's does this. This is a thing." Someone's accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Salvador Dali. Oh, yeah, look, yeah. Look at Dali's been given a bad rap, you know. I know really, it's he has. You know. Yeah, everybody hates him. Well, the art world doesn't Pretty like much. a celebrity. Well, That's what it is. Oh no. You think it's true. because he's? Oh no. Really? They love a celebrity. Look at Warhol. Oh yeah. Okay. And Warhol didn't have to right. do anything but sit up there with his uh, wig and go on to these he had talk a wig? shows. Wig? That hair. Oh yeah. yeah go on to these <laughs> talk shows with a wig and not say anything. And they said, "Did you? Did, wasn't that really? Did you right. see what Warhol said?" He said, "Yes." I I went, know, to, I went to a dinner once with him. I mean, Whoa. sitting at the table with him really? in New York That's when I lived good. there it was after his show at um, Ron Feldman, oh, and he sat there and said nothing, just like that. He just right. said nothing. Everybody carried on like he was a mannequin, just sitting there. Right, right. Well, I turned my back on Warhol. <laughs> no, well, I, Warhol re well, literally stole his uh, multiple ideas from Lim, right? No, no. I mean, the idea of reprinting well, an image? No, well, it was all happening you had at done the same it. time. It wasn't like I saw from Warhol. All know, right. Like that. But he came to L.A. in those he days. He did take my cows, though. He right, did the cows, right. And then right. turn them into wallpaper. Right. You know? Right. Because he was, I think he was probably a little pissed off at me, so he turned the cows into wallpaper. Wait, that's, did you, like, know him well, or? No. Oh, okay. No, I met, I met him, I was at a party at Dennis Hopper's, and it was 1964, and, and there was a big painting of mine up there that Dennis had bought, and, and he, I walked in, and, and Dennis says, here's something I'd like you to meet. Right, and Warhol standing in the corner like this. Did you know him? Or, I mean, you knew I did, of uh, him? Or? Uh, no, I saw his paintings, and I, I liked the Maryland thing, and the, yeah, stuff right. like that, you know? I mean, right. it was a uh, whole thing. Um, I didn't know he was gay. I was homophobic at the time, because I was this guy, kid that came from Yakima, Washington. Well, let me ask you, I mean, the whole I generation of... I whole story about that. It okay. seems like there was you some were homophobic. homophobic. Way back, because when Be, I, because It was the culture of the... Of, when I came into the art world, it was a pretty straight... Place. Where did you come from? I mean, the you, you know, like in the 70s. I mean, no, but really I mean, here? Straight. Did you uh, live I'm from here? Santa Monica. Yeah, I'm a okay. homeboy. Uh -huh. And people were homophobic then? And there was no art here? world. There was just a machismo to being oh. an artist. Oh, yeah, right. I remember uh -huh. that. Big heroic pain. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. And just, uh, just sort of drink. a macho stance, you know. You didn't have to worry about anybody. You were a white male in, in America still. Yeah, no, and it was... in the 70s, there, there It was, was very tough being um, in graduate school in, in my day. I mean, there was Being one a woman, you one mean? female right. instructor, one, right. Right. and that was Lita Albuquerque, and that's it. That's that's. Right. We had no role models except for men, and then we tried to right. fashion ourselves after men. And right. then the highest compliment that we could be paid as a woman was, "You paint like a man." You know, oh, you great. Know, I guess you're right about that, aren't you? Well, don't don't you remember those no, days? Right. I mean, you say, right. "Wow, you paint like a man." Wow, far out. You know, mm -hmm. so you were. And then somebody to make it even more had. A, be like it, like Judy Chicago. Well, right, and in, and in my day, it, it was deadly to be good looking, right? You you tried to play that down as right. much as possible. That's why I wanted you sitting in the middle, but what? all right, go oh, ahead. Oh, okay. okay. No, but you, right, remember? And and all the art chicks had right. to be kind of like, you, know, you had to be serious, no smiling, you know, get to work and, and do right. that kind of tough right. art, and then maybe, maybe we'd take a look at you, seriously. Yeah. Otherwise, you were, you know, basically. Did the woman's building affect your world at all? Mm, no, because okay. see, I was, I kind painter. of, yeah, I was a yeah, painter and uh -huh. I sort of looked at men painting and I said, yeah. oh, okay, that, that looks pretty right. good. I can, can yeah, sort of well, get with that. Yeah, hey, what's this donut sitting here? What? This thing. Should we try to cut into it or, no or I don't mean to interrupt, like it's really. about to come alive. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. I think, yeah, I think it is alive. <laughs> <laughs> Should we pull it in and mess with it or? or? 
You thought that uh, was hot, by the way? What? You thought that was hot? Spicy? Really? I'm, I'm not a spice person. I didn't get the spice. I didn't get that either. Well, I, I got thought... something on the top of it. Oh, okay. That blue, you that blue, yeah. That <laughs> I'm cool. Um, yeah, uh, I should have. When I started talking about that Warhol thing, I should keep going because uh, otherwise. We'll keep going. People, people are going to look yeah, and yeah, say, yeah. What? Oh, it's homophobic. Oh, that... Oh no! Right. Keep oh going. yeah, no. You better, you better well, no, get no, no, so yourself right. out of that mess. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> you better I'm keep gonna, on I'm going. Get myself out of this mess. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a kid who grows up in, in, in Yakima with a family that doesn't talk about sex at all, and nobody ever. Just, talks well, about and don't they just kill and things nobody, up there? Like shoot everything, shoot deer, shoot neighbors, yeah, shoot. No, no. My, oh. my parents. Were I'm there, ruining right. this thing. But it was. I think. You know, so I I, I grew up knowing just, nothing about art or about anything no about anything well right. did you come yeah, from an art oh house? hell no Neither did I. my no, they were, god they were just right. out of their minds right they, they didn't know what they were doing or, you know readers digest that was all well, they I didn't know. even have books in my house right yeah you know this isn't working here well, it's, it, it, it'll work for I'm you i'm gonna have Bob. to just go to, revert to a fork I, I gotta get out of this thing that i just said here. okay keep yeah going. okay well, please lynn you better and uh, <clears throat> was a macho world, though, wasn't it? No, but I, I remember at the age of, of, of 14, the, 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 the guy who was playing a trombone in this band that I had, his brother, uh, wanted to see my uh, stuff I had downstairs, which was kind of the beginnings of what I'm doing now that I've given up with bells and horns and yeah. things like this, right? And, uh, and, uh, and he looks at it, and, and, and my bedroom is right off its side, and he comes and he shoves me down the bed, and I squirmed out, and I ran. No. I still didn't even know why. That's called sexual assault. I know, because well, I watch saying, murder shows I every did, day. I still, and I didn't, still, you, know, you know, I got out of it, so it didn't happen. It was like, and I didn't think about How it. How old were you? I'm like uh, uh, 15. Whoa. That's about the right age. But I didn't know, I still didn't know anything. I come down to Los Angeles, and when the, the guy that I came down with uh, was going to USC film school, right? And uh, and I would meet these people that were friends of his, and they were all gay, and I didn't. And I could. Uh, Did you I know what gay was? No. Oh, okay. I, I'm, so, I'm naive, and I, I was in the army for two years, and still didn't. Uh, can you believe that one? But were there gay men in the army that, and you didn't know they, they were gay? Been, I think about Reese Jones and how he like so much and he was big and tall and he was really a good friend they were always very protective of me you know and uh, I never even thought about it right then I when I came to LA all of a sudden okay right I'm a I'm, a, I'm an artist I'm a poet I'm all this right I remember advertising I needed work right because I didn't have that much money so I remember <laughs> advertising in the it's in what it was, it the reader then? Or the what? free press. I don't know, free press. Probably. Okay. Penny saver. It said, yeah. <laughs> right. it said uh, artists, well, artists needs work, we'll do anything. <laughs> that was your first mistake, Lynn. That was your first mistake. I mean, you like, never you know, say I, that. I, I, talk about naive, right? <laughs> wow. So I go, actually, I go with Robert, this friend of mine. We go out to this Whoops. place, and the first thing I walked in, and he comes up and he goes, oh. What I'd like you to do is <gasps> give me a massage. And that was cool. Wow. So we left, right? So it, Wait, he didn't get the massage? No. I don't, did he pay I didn't you? do anything like that. Not even for money, I wasn't going to do Not that to that guy. Oh, okay. I mean, you could tell what, what, okay. And then all of a sudden, it's kind of like everything started to die. And then his friends would say, about me, you know, that we're gay, he'd say, well, I know he's gay. I could tell by his eyes. I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then I started to get really homophobic that people were going to think I was gay, you know? And, I, and I've always loved women, women, and that's all I ever think about. Okay? Still now? Today? What? Still? No, I still that's all I ever think about. What? Go, it's all I ever think about. Yeah, but but is anyway, that right? And if you're gay, so you think about, so, so, man, but, you know. But anyway. It's all anybody so, thinks about. <laughs> so when I, get out, when I get on the art scene and everything and all this happening, right, and, uh, and then Dennis has this party at... Uh, uh, we're all maybe having a show there, like 64, I don't know. But, you know, and then I met Warhol, and Warhol's standing there, and Dennis says, here's somebody I'd like you to meet, right? And he's standing in the corner there like this. 
Uh, I'd never seen him or anything. Like, I just saw his paintings, and I thought his paintings were neat, you know, like this, and and I did. <laughs> and then he goes, he says, "Oh hi, I just love your paintings." And I was looking at me, going, "I just love your paintings," and I'm going, "I said thanks," and I turned around and walked away. And that was the end. I never saw one more after, after that. And then he, then he. <laughs> Then uh, about a couple years later, uh, because it, the year, it had to be the year before that, because in 63, he had brought, uh, Irving Blum had brought Warhol in to see my show twice. It had all the cows, and when you walked in, there was this big cow, and then there was the landscapes and all this, right? So what happens after this incident, and then the next year, what it was, 65, uh, he comes out with a cow wallpaper, and all I thought was, he was turning my painting into wallpaper. Mm -hmm. see, was it the same cow or almost the same cow? It was the, no, but it was the head of the same kind of cow. Got it. And everything, but I had the whole body and everything, right? And, uh, and then a, a couple of years ago, Christopher Knight, who is gay, wrote and loves Warhol, which is fine. I don't care about that, right? He writes an article in the Times, it was in that section called Home Section. I don't yeah. know. And he write and he says, I could I could always understand why Warhol everything that Warhol did and why he did it. But I could never understand why he did the cows. It was an homage. I could never understand why he did the cows. Then it dawned on me, he says. It was the feminine answer to Picasso's macho bulls. He just made it all up in his mind. It sounds pretty good, though. It sounds I'm, good. I mean, I I'll, I'll buy that. I know. I know. Also, the cow is, it's not true. is a powerful image. <laughs> the cow is just a powerful image. It's a it mother. Is? It's a in India. I, I it's a like god. Here we consume it as readily as we can. It's a it's an intense animal. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I like cows. I always like cows. I like horses. I was of one of the teenage girls. Woman, yeah. All girls like that. What is that? What? Yeah, I don't understand. Oh, I loved. I used to pretend to be a horse. We used to take potato chips as a kid, and we'd squish them up, and so they'd be just like little crumbs, and then we'd eat them like this and pretend they were oats. We we used to gallop. Wow. We used to go out and gallop together. Why do you think horses? Oh, they're powerful. They're big. They're muscular. They're beautiful. They're and then you can get on them and ride them. Well, that's you can what I was take so you charge like of them. Pretending like you're a horse, huh? Yeah, oh, I love them. I think it has to do with men. You used to draw them all I the time. I think it has to do with men. I think it's very sexual. Yeah, I think it has to do with men and I have to do with the power thing because they all know, even the young, that the men have, the, have this uh, power or something. So it's kind of like almost like maybe taming that power. Yeah, Plus controlling horse, it. If you draw a horse, it's a series of sausages, right? Let's face it, there's the torso, <laughs> the neck, the face. It's yeah, all well, there's look, also I mean, a nice big sausage coming down there, too. So, you know, gross. That's another thing. I mean, that's what it is. It's where, else, draw. where else can a, a woman or girl experience that thing like that? Well, I didn't concentrate Except on, on that area well, myself. I, 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 I was, I was sitting you. on top. So you like to be on top? Huh? That's it. <laughs> right. We're learning a lot here, Lynn. <laughs> are, huh? She likes to pretend like she's a horse. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Then no. she likes to be on top. Uh, There's a lot to work with. We there. used to ride them, ride these big horses in our bathing suits in the summer. Oh, please. Bareback. Oh, Bareback. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, you know, I like that idea. You tried to turn <laughs> us on. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing here? <laughs> right. And then in your underwear eventually you'd be right. Oh, God. God, I was bucked off a horse. You ever ride them in spandex pants? I know your deal with the spandex, oh, okay. Bob. I, just I know that. No, <laughs> bathing suits. Bathing suits. That's good, too. I was a bucked off a horse right down on the... Oh, yeah, I got thrown, too. I got thrown, too. Yeah, but I was, I was out at the, at, the, at the... Somewhere around the Warner or Bob Hope Ranch and, uh, with his friend, and then we were driving up there, and then we saw these two girls, uh, probably about the age you were, and then they had these horses, right? And we just talked to them over the fence, and the girl says to me, you want to you want to ride my horse? Oh, you are I'll cut you. <laughs> and she knew right away what was going to happen. I said, as uh, soon as I sat on it, it went wow. Over the top. And you went. I know, but then I thought about Christopher Reeves and everything. Oh Lately, yeah. I thought about what could have. Oh boy, yeah. Oh yeah. Could have been. What could have right. transpired? Mm -hmm. Anyway.
you could have turned into Superman. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, no, the gay thing affected me uh, uh, up to there with Christopher, with Christopher Knight because Christopher Knight wrote an article uh, in uh, Art Issues magazine um, about how a feminism was going to, it was called e-feminism and how a feminism was going to, not feminism, and change art, right? Mm -hmm. And in it he would talk about things like uh, how certain abstract expressionists were butch posturing and things he would never say in the Times. This was in our issues. Oh, I see. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so incensed I called him up. And, uh, and I just got right through to the Times. I said, Christopher Knight. And I guess they thought it was somebody important the way I said it. And I, Christopher Knight answers and I just told him, you know, about being inclusive. You know what I mean? It's I like, see. you know, because I see it in his articles and seen it all the way up. If somebody's homosexual, he's got to tell them that he is. Oh, to, that that becomes a point. That become, always becomes An a argument point. in the art. Uh -huh. You know, and I was getting, and I tell his voice was shaking. On the telephone. How long oh, ago yeah, was this? This was in 1996, I believe. Yeah, 95. he's been, he's been I'm at still, the Times for a long time. Thing, just before I came down here. Hmm. And he's never written on this since, of course. Now, here's the difference. You know, but it's still, it's the idea, I don't like the idea of people taking sides in who they are. But remember when the LA Times was the only way an artist could get reviewed in this town? Remember? Yeah, it was the only. I mean, oh, that yeah. was it. There was Art Week up and in San Francisco. What do you mean? Well, it still is except for the weekly, but the weekly is... But, I mean, there's a lot of blogs and there's a lot of things on the Internet that people really pay attention to. Oh, I don't know, because I don't use it anymore. Oh, okay. Now, i got to say this. Uh, I, you know, the difference between you in the 50s and 60s and, and me in the 70s was everybody thought Bob and Bob were gay because we were two guys together. But we liked, we, well, we, we were, had some dresses on so Yeah, we wore, we didn't, we wore makeup, we wore wigs, we wore, and you know, we almost invited that speculation because it was a different time and it, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a different time. Uh, Did the it feminist help you? Movement, uh, but you're a feminist, you know, it, right? Yeah, I mean, we were involved with feminists. Feminist. We were involved with the, the up, upcoming gay uh, yeah. you know, performance artists, you know, coming out, and especially in performance art, because that's really where the gay community has best expressed its artistic yeah, intent yeah. to the mm. performance art. Mm. Uh, and also ethnic groups and stuff, you know, they all came to performance art. So, uh, so yeah, everybody used to think we were, we were gay, yeah, except the girls, they knew we weren't. Performance art was we were sort out. of... But you weren't afraid of it. No, it wasn't uh, a threat, was, it was... I was afraid of it. Well, it was a... Yeah. That's a performance art? between oh, no, the 70s way back. and... Oh, well, when I was young. And oh, I'm okay. saying that's the difference out. between being in the 60s, 50s and 60s versus the 70s. By that you time, it right. was okay. If somebody was, thought you were gay, well, so what, you know? Yeah. Right. And women had, were, were getting their power, and the woman's building in performance art came downtown and it really empowered women that place that's why i asked you mm -hmm. about it but hey, i remember i remember when christopher right. knight wrote great on Ju Brian, judy chicago oh that's Thank you. incredible oh yeah what kept you from eating those on the way over here <laughs> <laughs> i remember when christopher knight wrote on uh, i'm eating one of these on judy, yeah, Ch judy chicago's dinner party thank you when they had it there it was, mm -hmm. it was the first time that he had that i'd seen something on the cover you know, that mm -hmm. in color that wasn't probably... Now, I don't want to sound yeah. ignorant, but didn't Judy Chicago have something to do with our women's building? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was, she was one she of the was, founders, yeah. I'm pretty sure. So she Judy, was uh, um, with Lloyd Hammer all then. Take one of these. Oh, okay. Um, Jesus. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, one of the questions a lot of people ask is what happened to all the feminists? People were feminists for a while, and then they went away. I mean, well, of course, not Barbara well say, Smith. What happened and, to all the performance artists? Uh, you know, they either got jobs in academia or, or gave up. Right. Well, I think a lot of artists just or give up anyway, like right? Me and they keep going. <laughs> yeah. Well, there were, anyway, I want to say about the Christopher Knight on Judy Chicago because it had to do with the feminist thing. And he was trying to deny in the article. He, here's an article. He puts her in the front and then, then, then and then uh, tears her down. You I know? see. And because trying to say that, that, he, that she really didn't have to do with the feminist movement. Right. What did he think she had to do well, with then? I think it's just the fact that Judy was also macho, mm -hmm. and, and Judy wasn't, and Judy wasn't gay. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people thought she was because right. she was part of the feminists. Well, all right. the feminists were thought of as as gay. That's yeah, what I know. people's fear, you know. Yeah. 
Oh no, Judy, I had a, a, a studio with her and Lloyd Hamill back in 65 in Pasadena. We split it three ways, $25 a piece. Right. Wow. And, and she was you going, know Lloyd Hamrell's work? Yeah, I do. I almost went to work for him, actually, hmm. as like an assistant just in the office. Oh, really? but it didn't work out. Well, he kind of dropped out of the picture, but you know, mm -hmm. people are going to drop out of the picture if they're not connected with uh, certain people, and that's, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I'm connected to you, you and Lisa Lynn, so okay. I'm hanging in there. So why do you... It's so good. It is. Oh, my delicious. God. So I'm thinking, or one of the questions that I have is, how is it and why is it do you think that certain people just keep hanging in there? I mean, obviously the ones who get real famous, that's a no-brainer, right? It's right. paying mortgage, it's buying Mercedes, it's right. doing whatever they're going to do with their money. But what about people who don't get wealthy? What do you think... What do you think some of the dynamic is for just hanging in there? Why do people hang wow. in there? Why do we? Because most well, of them give up, right? Most right, most artists do. just well, stop and to hang in there. They have to be something that was really a part of the core that, that you, you you couldn't stop doing it. Right. right. You can't stop. Right. You I mean, I can't stop, stop even right. if I want no. to. I, I I've tried to stop. <laughs> I have. It's just horrible. When you I just... turned fifty, I said, you know what? If there's not enough love, not enough money. Why am I doing this? But I couldn't. I so. couldn't. I couldn't either. You do so, it for yourself. So what's that's who you are? Okay, that's got a little heat to it. <laughs> that one does. So what's God, the it's good. Though. Yeah, that one. Oh, mm -hmm. Yes. Nobody told me. Whoa. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's supposed to be advertising the restaurant. <laughs> yeah. To the chef, man, this, it's great. I mean, it's, this is nice yeah. stuff. It is. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pay attention to him. He's pretending. Yes. So what? Why? Why couldn't you stop then, Bob? I can't stop making art. That's all there is to it. I, I guess it's just you know some people. It's, just it's, an, it's impulsive, I right? Mean, I did it as a kid too. No, Me so too. I wasn't getting paid then either. So what it is with you? You have the same kind of thing that I have. I know. The curse. The curse. And I see a lot. And Lisa of that. has it. Uh, but I, uh, yeah, you have it. Maybe in a, in a, in a, in a yeah, yeah. I mean, we, right? we can't. Still, you got to make art. Period. It's not just that. Okay, what is? What? It's something that came from when we were young, and it's like wanting to be a star. Wanting be to be out there where people can see you. You're, you're doing something. You want people to see it. I'll give an alternative. And you want people to like it. Right. I'll give an alternative. Yeah. Working out childhood traumas. Yeah. That would be me. And getting well, that, kudos as a kid, too. So is mine. Exactly. Yeah. I wouldn't be doing my machine now. Right. I used to draw underneath the table, the dining room table. Just draw constantly. Yeah. Because, yeah, I was drawing constantly. Because Were you I was drawing all the time, Lynn, as a kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, well, that's all I, I did. did. I started drawing at the age of, um, I still have the drawing. My mother had shaved them um, at the age, I remember being in the, uh, was it? it age six or seven? I like at seven, I had to look at them copying things out of. There's even one of Mickey Mouse copying them out of, uh, you know. I used to oh. copy out of this Aesop's Fables book. Remember Aesop's Fables? Yeah. And I used yeah. to copy all the. They had little nice illustration engravings. Right. I used to copy those when I was really young. And just. Uh, I just, you I know, was, the the bedlam was going on all around me. Right. And, and then I just right. said, oh, well, th good for them, TV and here I go. And and, withdrew. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. I learned uh, figure drawing. You know, I was copying Batman and Superman. I really learned figure drawing oh, from yeah. copying, from doing superheroes. And, <laughs> and then I went, grew up and went to art school. And there's, you know, So did you think there, you were going to be a cartoonist? I did, yeah. Oh, I you really, didn't? Yeah. I, I didn't know I, anything about fine art. I just knew I could draw, <laughs> I and I, I liked gonna, drawing Batman. I thought I was going to be a cartoonist. Is that right? At first, well, I, was, I still had the cartoons and stuff that I drew back in there. Huh. I thought I was going to be a cartoonist. The same thing. Because I didn't know about fine art. Until I saw Salvador Dali's... Uh, Salvador Dali, you know, yeah, like, he's the one who... <laughs> he yeah. reached out to the... To the he got uh, me. You know... To the people. Well, the other thing that really got me, too, was when I was 13, I saw Powers of Ten. Remember that Charles and Ray Ames film? Right. Remember that short film, it. Powers of I, Ten? I, I know of it, but I never saw Where it. Where there's, there's people having a picnic. 13. Okay. People having a picnic, and they're in Chicago somewhere, and they're laying on a lawn, and, and then the camera kind of just pulls back. That's on the guy's hand. The camera's on the guy's hand. It just pulls back, and then it goes into you know, the universe, and then, the, and then it goes back down into the hand, into the structure, the wow. atoms, and it was far wow. out, man. It, wow. What age were you in? 13. Oh, wow, wow, I never saw anything. It like just blew, blew my mind. I said, oh, you know, 
There I am. Here I go. Wow. Uh -huh. Almost makes me want to get into your parents, but I don't know if we want to do that. One was an orphan during the Great Depression, abandoned in a crate or something, raised in an orphanage, and the other one was a Holocaust survivor. Oh, my God. Jeez. Mm -hmm. And the two shall meet. Can you imagine? And spawn this. You know, so we took all those memory genes and stuck them yeah. in the air. Yeah, well, the yeah. First one tortured. Out, uh, Just a tortured individual. In a basket in a, uh, as an orphan. That's like, uh, so that was like Moses. <laughs> yeah. Floated down a stream. <laughs> and you were born where? Um, outside Philadelphia. Outside Philadelphia. Yeah. And Lynn, where are you, who are your parents? What? what? What's the lowdown on your parents? The dead. That's what I, <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> no, I mean, were they artists? Were they orphans? No, were they no refugees? One was, no one was an artist. No one was an No one an was an, yeah. My, but, my, my parents were very boring, except for my really? grandmother. Well, not really. And I got to say, my, you said they weren't artists. Somebody, drawing is inherited, period, right? No. My dad I could draw, know. his mother could draw. Is that draw. right? Yeah, no, I mean, no one could draw not, in my... No, yeah, that's weird. but they could draw, and that's probably why you drew, too. Right, but I, I right. always assumed it's just a natural, like, well, that, line in the family. No, and my what, niece is, you know... Yeah, well, that's true. Uh, no, it's not... An, I don't think it's inherited. Any okay. more than music is or anything. It's you know taught, that, it's taught you you know that uh, documentary friends. called Painter's Painting? You know that documentary? It has Rauschenberg and... I never looked at those things. Well, Jasper Johns was part of this documentary. It's male art. Male art, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, there was a woman. Uh, uh, okay. Helen Frankenthaler was in All it. Right. But she was sitting in a corner, very demure with her legs right. crossed, you know, okay. being very, very feminine. Yeah, right. That, dis that was very disappointing to me. But, yeah, right. Like but, Pat Nixon. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, uh, wait, what's the more recent one? Laura Bush, yeah, kind of yeah. like. Right. And, um, and um, he... It was Jasper Johns who said, you know, he was from this total white trash family in wherever, Tennessee or Kentucky or Virginia. I mean, just horrible. And he said he had no idea what art was. He just knew that he was not going to be doing this, meaning that life. Mm -hmm. and, and I kind of had that same feeling, right. too. I sort of assessed it at 10, and I said, no, nah, I'm not going to do this. This is not for me. Mm. I think a lot of artists are super directed early on, don't you think? Somehow, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm always surprised. Like, like uh, uh, Don Ed Hardy, you know who he is? Uh -huh. Don Ed Hardy, right? So, I know who he is, yeah. So Don, uh, I, I looked at in the very beginning of his book that Patrick put out, you know, the oh, great, mm -hmm. great, great, great book. You know, and, uh, and all those really great drawings and all that stuff like this. And then it showed pictures of him at the age of, what was it, like 11, 10 or something, drawing on people's backs in his yard. Is that right? You know, and I said, over here, and he kind of started the whole thing, the whole tattoo, you know, mm -hmm. thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was, and then I, that's the same age as me. I'm out there with little horns and bells and, you know, which is very funny. I, I just think that those things are really, really very meaningful that happened to you back at that time. Yes. Right. And, and, and I think people regret it. They go on with their life. They become this or whatever their parents yes. think they should be. Yes. And all this. And then they. So you're sc saying that you'd just done what you've done since you were a kid, even? Yeah. Right. I look back and I say, uh -huh. hey, like my son says, why do you call it your problem? And I said, it's my problem. You know, See, I call it my oldest friend. That's what I call it. Oh, well, that's it's my probably oldest, nicer. Mm -hmm. My it's oldest probably, friend. It's probably nicer. Yeah. But it's all with the things that I call things, it a cur my curse. Yeah, but if things, didn't happen, <laughs> if things didn't happen just quite one way or the other way like this, yes. you know, that never would have happened. Yes, yes. And but ha haven't you taught a lot of people, though, who, um, who, well, I've taught a lot of continuing ed people, and they come back to school because they want to try to pick up where they left off. Oh, they right. really wanted to be artists. And because of their parents, as you say, or some other circumstance, they became lawyers or right. whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really hard for them, I think. And it's also hard, I don't know, I guess people do succeed in getting back to their art, but I can't fathom it. Like you, you have t a 10 away. or 20 year break, and then you decide to pick it up. 10 or 20 years, but don't you have yeah. empty holes in your life? I, that, yeah, I do, I've but not very ones, long, you know? not very long. I mean, the most I can... a year and a half. Oh, no, I, I, I could it. never do a year and a half. I'd, I'd yeah. blow my head off, I think. Right. If I, maybe a couple months, maybe, at times, right. where right. I just kind of hung out and... 
right. read read books or something like that. Yeah, you're a really dedicated person. Yeah, I'm very. It, it's my it's my whole thing. It's my whole life. If I didn't have that, I would I would have killed myself. I think somewhere. You, have, you haven't gotten your due the way you should. Lisa's I, the I, best artist. I can't stand it. Her work is. I so saw good. I saw the work you had in in, in Doug Harvey's the. Uh, Painting show, oh, that, you know, that like big that. painting. There's a lot of painting there, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I looked at that painting and I said, wow, that's the best painting in here. Oh, you know, that's so nice of you to say that. Yeah, then. You know, Thank you. And, uh, you know, so I, you know, I, 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 I've been raised by a lot of stuff like that. I, I remember when Lark Nisba did the uh, Sunshine War show there. Mm. And uh, I kept saying, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, Mike McMillan's got to be in that show. And, and he just like, like ignores me, right? Like this, and didn't put him in the show, the Sunshine War show, you know? Yes. And the same goes with, was it, uh, but now he's in the, then he was in the Paris show the next year. Oh, he was. Yeah, McMillan. right, so that made me really yeah. good. You know? Right, right. right. It's kind of like, you know, uh, people, he's great. I well, love people him. here are from the people that usually, just like they say, well, what's the history of Los Angeles artists, Walter Hobbs and Henry Hopkins, of course. And they have their own people that they've been pushing from their galleries and when they were... Oh, yes, of course, all, of course. You know, and, and a lot of them don't really look, hmm. you know, and, uh, and then all the art history just comes and follows it. Well, right, the editing process yeah, is, also, is quite something. Well, what about the, before the Ferris Gallery, uh, the Boris Feidelson, and John McCoff and the four abstract classes? That was the beginning of it. Contemporary modern art here. Now, Lois and you know, I just saw some article on Lois Feidelson, actually about Christopher Knight, which was yeah, cool. right. It was a good article. Which was good. It was because uh -huh. uh, Lois was hard to explain. Yeah, I, mm. but you, you, know, do, you know the word. Yes, I, I love yes. that. I mm -hmm. love that. But I mean, he was ahead of Ellsworth Kelly. Oh, no way! So, totally. and, and then they pushed Ellsworth Kelly. Well, Ellsworth Kelly was and New he, York. Well, see, because in those days, New York had, <clears throat> excuse yeah, me, precedence over yeah, anything yeah, but, in those days. But the power, when John Copens was the editor of Art Board yes. Magazine, when it was here. Yes, it was and here, then, right. And then, be then became the uh, curator after Walter Ho at Wal at, when Walter Hobbs was there. They, he was writing, a, he wrote a book on Ellsworth Kelly, and I remember Jim Dimitri, and he became the, uh, the, the director after uh, Hobbs. Um, said uh, he read the book, it was a 300 page book and he couldn't understand what he was saying, he had to read it twice and still couldn't understand what he was saying. That's dedicated. He said, yeah. he said what, do you, what can you really say about Ellsworth Keller? It's simple shit. I'm sorry man, it's simple shit. I mean, Feidelson was much better than Ellsworth Keller, but they pushed this guy up there just like they're doing with a lot of the artists back there now, including your, uh, Jeff Koons, your uh, yeah, I mean, all these people, uh, you know, you can see it. You, you see the prices getting way up like that. It's like this, um, it's big money, man. It's big money. You yeah, know? I mean, and you know what seems so interesting to me, too, is like a lot of people who are on that loop, the big money, even the painters, I mean, really, right. really um, strictly p people who paint, they, they actually hire other painters to paint. Oh, huh. I mean. No, wait, Raphael did that. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know no, there's. That's a, not the same. I, I know there's an atelier. I, I, I recognize that, but I can't imagine giving direction to someone to say, okay, can you, can you do the backgrounds right. now? And get, get up no, four of those, and then I'll well, come in. They don't in have to do that. I saw some, uh, something on Kostabi or something uh, on the PBS, and there he was talking about how he, had, he just he, he, he does any, you know, I only do, you know, I do a million dollars in advertising. <laughs> I got these other people doing the thing, and you know, he did the airbrushing and all that stuff, actually better than I did, so I let him do the thing, and yeah, I mean, he got other, other people doing all this stuff for yes, him, you know? Yes, yes. And, uh... Kind of the beauty, though, of being an artist, isn't it, is actually being there making those things, well, isn't whole, it? I mean... The whole thing that's being, yeah. the whole thing that's being missed, of course, is the process. And the process, I mean, Picasso wouldn't discover what he discovered. None of those people would have discovered what they discovered. If they didn't have the process, so they make mistakes and they go back. Yes. Home. And by those mistakes, yes. they know what's... And if you don't make any mistakes, that's why there's so much art that's so damn boring now. You look at the stuff and you say, oh, cool, that's all... <laughs> you know, that's all, all drawn out and filled in and, uh, you know... Right. 
here we are. And they're consistent. They're all very consistent, they're right? Very consistent. Yeah, because if you're not in there, sort of doing it yourself, you don't find a kind of funny direction, and then another funny direction. Well, and always just... the money makes consistency too. I see yes, all these people that's that, true. Most of the people that uh, that started out with me on the art scene, I mm -hmm. see, you know, a lot of the stuff. Who did you start out with? On... Oh my God! Like, who were your buddies that you were showing oh, with buddies? all the time? I mean, I that never, you would show I with. I never, never hung out with, uh, <laughs> with artists much. Is that right? No. No, no I, you, Ferris Gallery, that was a prop, one of the problems I had in Ferris Gallery because they were all buddy, 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 buddies, and, you know, this. And uh, I didn't, I want to, you know, they're out partying and I'm, I'm home painting. Working, right. And I got right. a, a, a wife and a child to support. Right. I'm not being supported like Banks New was by some woman and all this stuff, you know. <laughs> and so it's kind of like, you know. I know more about that. No, 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 go ahead. So I was eventually kicked out of Ferris Gallery. Oh, you were? By Robert Irwin and uh, Billy O. Banks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they came up to, uh, I was having a show at the Passing Art Museum, and, and Walter said, uh, Walter said, uh, 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 Billy O. And, Ir uh, and Irwin came up and said that if they put me in the group show, they're leaving. It's crazy. And he said, uh, well, and he said it was the first time he'd ever seen Irwin crying. <laughs> First time, he said he was in rage. He must have been out of his mind. No, well, there was some things oh. that happened to me. Okay. I always just say. What so what do you what do you think yeah. that? And that's the problem. Right. See, what do you I think the a, threat to them was? I think the biggest threat that well, Kino's had just just when I had my show there, and I remember Kino sitting there, called me up and, and he was looking at my blackboard and shows he I've been looking at this all day. He says, "Man, that is just." Like, yeah. He well, he left. Yeah. That. That year, at the end of that year, and I was at year, uh, uh, Berman had already left and gone. So it was changing into the. Already left and gone to heaven. Yeah, it, it was changing into the Irving Blum Gallery. Right. Right. So you know, and uh, and that and that consisted of Ed Shea and Larry Bell and Bob Irwin, uh, uh, Craig Kaufman. Yeah, and, and Rache and Bell were Irwin students, and. Um, That's and, right. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So and Ferris, I love the Craig Ferris Gallery years. was right above. When it moved down, it right above, oh, right. Up, I mean, uh, Art Forum was right above Ferris Gallery. Oh, so he had this little. That's door convenient. Door I didn't know that. Top, huh. And they just pushed. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and that was the way it went. Well, that's kind of how it always goes, right? It's. Yeah. That's. I mean, unless you have a really astute curator or a, or a writer who's really who's found something, and they kind of hang on to that and keep championing. Yeah. Like, for instance, there's, a, there's an art writer and critic here um, named James Scarborough. I don't know if you know him. Um, but he's followed my work for 20 years, and he's been consistent with it, and he's just kept me visible. Mm -hmm. And unless you have something like that, you know, yeah. it's, I mean, it's really hard. Yeah, unless you have a champion that really, because he's fighting to keep me visible when he doesn't have to fight to keep someone else visible, right? Because they're visible already. He can just be writing about people. Right, exactly. What do you pay him to do? <laughs> no, he's really like a, a, a dedicated fan, you know, for 20, over 20 years. Right. It's amazing. Smile. Oh, thank you. Anyway, Sweet. Uh, yeah. I need to smile more too. We got Everybody to needs to smile more. Well, maybe I should yeah. be making y'all laugh, right? I'm one of the. Bosses. Yeah, no, you, that's your job, yeah, man. I uh, I, when you called me to do this, that's what I thought was going to happen. You're going to entertain me. You've been a little quiet. Unless the other Bob's here or something, I don't know. Uh, I can't be making you laugh, but I will say, man, has this food been good? I'm kind of like, yes, I'm not trying to hustle excellent. the restaurant. It's just, well, this is pretty. It's excellent. I want to keep grabbing it. We're talking. Can you talking believe we're in downtown? Like Can you believe no, we're in downtown? That's no. what's really far out. No. For us, yeah. right? Because you, you All wouldn't I find this downtown. To walk down the street with a pool cue. So you don't find <laughs> this downtown. Or you need downtown, and they don't. I don't know because I don't. They don't have. Uh, well, remember, I mean, when we lived here in the early '80s and '70s, there was nothing downtown. No, it was. It That's was. What a we were saying before. I mean, it's amazing well, that you'd, you'd dangerous you hellhole. Have a studio down at town. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just How saying. How long have you been there? This time, two years. See, I, I went away because I got evicted in You were on 96. the west side of town. You know, and right. then I was on the west side for a short while ago. Years. You, uh, somebody told me you were looking for a studio. This was like a year? Or uh, I was, but now, but now I'm cool. Yeah, because I remember uh, uh, Matt saying, well, at least I haven't been to the studio. I had the whole studio there above the Church of Art. 
you know, like oh, this. Oh, that's said, right. I, you know, I, I remember wow. that now. And, yeah, and I said to Matt, I said, well, How much uh, do you rent that for? I said, well, what, I, says, well, I, I told him, what, well, what about Lisa Adams going up? <laughs> he says, no, you don't want her up there. She's cra not, not crazy, but it kind of, you know, like this. Yeah, yeah. That's all <laughs> kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great space. Is it? Oh. Beautiful. Can you paint in there? You're going to have to talk to Matt about that, I think. Right? May, uh, I may have to put a head out. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. No, I, I haven't rented it Last time I saw him, he said, that Lisa Adams. I've been waiting for something to happen. <laughs> <there. laughs> See, the only problem with that is my music machine is down below. And so uh -huh. if I do things that are like on Tuesday night, which I go up to 10 or 1 o'clock playing with a couple other people like that, so I, every I Tuesday would, you have kind of a jam session, is that right? Starting to do that. We got to oh, go. Oh, that's good. Got to go yeah. sing. Who, who's singing with you? Uh, You're singing, of course. Do you my sing, Bob? My voice oh, is yeah. getting better too. We got to do duets. Oh yeah, I know. I've said that before. Right. Yeah, I know. I know. It's crazy. I just don't. This nice deep voice. Yeah, well, you have that kind of broadcast. We'll voice. come and, and do it. I'll come down and do it. So Tuesday. We used to be Mondays. I, we changed it. Okay. But we're doing this sound stuff with. Uh, with two other people that, that really uh, were not musicians, which really made it really great. Right. Because some of the sound stuff we're doing sounds like, I mean, like nothing you've ever heard before in your life. And that's what people keep saying. The woman from Documenta came over because of uh, Allie, told her to come over. Who's and Allie? Allie's was about next to the one who curated the show at the Hammond. Oh, oh, okay. She just curated the Crumb Show, too, right? And uh, um, so... Uh, and they just, I, I played them just the improvisation for like an eight minute thing like that. You know? mm -hmm. And they just kind of spontaneously started plotting. I did the same thing with my, my uh, uh, kids up in, um, and you, usually people don't do that. I mean, you can tell when somebody says, oh, that was really nice. But that was interesting, but it's like. You know, they were inspired, anything. they were inspired, yeah. Uh -huh. You know, so I thought, and then I hear say, they never heard anything like that in their life. It's, 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 first of all, hmm. sometimes it sounds like John Coltrane, but at the same time it sounds like jazz, but it sounds funny at the same time, so you get this kind of, hmm. and uh, so I'm, I'm anxious about putting, that's, that's actually the most exciting thing to me now that I'm doing. So somebody recording that for you? No, I record it. I see. And you're going to... You have one life. CD done, right? Yeah, but, I, but that was you know, five years ago or something. Right. And now I'm... I'm I'm so much better. My voice is better. Everything. I keep getting better. Mm -hmm. and that's if you don't keep getting better, well. Keep, yeah, that's isn't the that thing. what we want? No matter what we that's do. That's the thing. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, that's the other thing. Like sex, I just keep getting better and, <laughs> and better at it. No, but look. I at, want look, everyone to know but that. But look at art. You go back in history. <laughs> you go back in history, and you look at all these artists, all the way up to you know, all the way up to the '60s or whatever. These people were still doing great stuff all the way up to the end. Yeah. Now, yeah, that's all of a sudden, 60, well, all of a sudden, it gets up and you, you look back and you say, oh, yeah, this guy, he was really doing great stuff there in the 60s. Now it's the 90s and it's, everybody's kind of good. And, and, and I see this, this youth thing and this energy and, and then all of a sudden it just burns itself out. And, well, don't you think the system is kind of responsible for that? Oh, the yeah. art world, they, they kind of churn through these, these sure younger people and, and, you know, kind of get oh, them to yeah. do that. And well, it was the same way, actually, when I went out, because I came right out of art school only two, only two years. I see. And was immediately in Ferris Gallery. I see. At 26, Larry Bell was even younger than me and got in there, you know. So Bob and Bob hit it fast. Bob we were at, is uh, that right? Yeah, we, we did. We were at uh, that big gallery, took us right away. Ruth Schaffner, oh, I remember and, Ruth Schaffner. and Lynn put us in a, a show in, the, uh, uh, in 1975 in the Imagination Show. That was nice for us. Mm. We had our artwork and we performed. I'm slow. Yeah. I'm slow and I'm a late bloomer. I'm slow. I'm just kind of, I just yeah. slow, kind of chugging along, you know. I mean, I, I, I never hit it anywhere. Just kind of. Yeah, but see, that's also sometimes a good thing. Yeah, yeah right. Because yeah, no, I, I did feel, feel like we I hit it fine for about that. five years. You know, I you feel know, good we were, about that. Right. Well, see, I, yeah, well, because then you have to some place you don't yeah. have anywhere to fall from. Right. 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 Uh -huh. I just keep getting better right. and better, as you say. And, well, and I've it's always very felt, encouraging. believe it or not, you know, you can look at me and say, "Oh, well, this guy's you know made it or what." No, I've always felt that I was always being held down all uh, all this time. Well, right? don't you think that's so part that, 
that's part of the... Well, part of that's being kind of a, a one-off artist, right? You know, not being a gang in a gang, kind of not being yeah, a group right. of or yeah, one of exactly. those people that make that kind well, of stuff. Well, then all the critics can right. refer to this group and yes. this group. And, and the same with me. I mean, it's just kind of, you're, you're one off. You're an iconoclast, and, yeah. and you just have done your own thing. And for me, those are the best artists. I mean, I look at Lee Montague, or I look at I Gustin, know. and I see them travel the decades being them, right. not being pushed by the That's 70s right. and pushed and by the 80s. And being rejected for doing that. All the time. That change, all the time. that change. Yeah. Wow. Well, you get lumped into group. You don't really, it's somebody else puts you in the group. Uh, yeah. journalists or whatever because yeah. I was in the group of the first downtown artists and you know none of our work was similar in mm -hmm. intent we all just happened to live here but there was a book about us there was a movie about us who were your early champions uh, let's see uh, god I can't remember that far back but uh, certainly Peter Frank uh, Christine McKenna uh, Linda Burnham but Christine McKenna was an art writer way years before her rock and roll writing I mean right. that's what she was doing she and she was first band letter oh, right she did? she's an art girl oh that's right. so great rubber band. oh that's so right. great yeah, uh so let's see peter frank christine i can't remember who else was writing back then but it, they're all kind of well known now mm -hmm. you know but right. they weren't necessarily mm -hmm. then uh and then there was that young turks movie about the 10 downtown artists which was uh andy wilf if you remember that yes. guy he killed yeah, himself sure. and, and woods andy davy mm -hmm. uh bob and bob uh James Croak, who moved to New York, uh, a couple of them are dead. Monique Safford, uh, Colleen Sterrett. Mm -hmm. and, and because we were in this group, uh, there, it, there was a benefit from it, sort of. It, yeah. was, it was easier for writers to, to look at a group and, and extol the group rather than pick out individuals. And, you know, was, but, then, but the group, just like a, a quick uh, out of the gate success, you know, then there's another thing to fall from. Yes. So, you know, all the group was dying and moving away, and, and we were never really connected except by myth anyway. Yeah. Right, and I think, like, what's nice for me that's happening now is younger people are coming to my work, younger writers. Um, that's the nicest. And, and that's, that's a lot. it right. does, it means a lot right. to me. I mean, and they're all, they're all women, I mean, younger women who, yeah. who come to my work. Um, and you did a thing with uh, Shana somewhere, where right? uh, Shana Dambrot, where you mm -hmm. taught, or what was that? I, I missed it. it was you mean a that gallery? Co collaboration thing? She, yeah. She, yeah. Yeah, she did a, she curated an exhibition where she put two artists together, groups of twos. Oh, and we okay. collaborated and you, we, we With had, her, you did it, right? Yeah, it was called right. a joint custody project. So you'd have, somebody would start making something and then you didn't even know who that someone was and you deliver it to the gallery and then the other partner would pick it up from the gallery and then keep going on it and then deliver it wow. back and this went on for about two months Great. and it was a guy in Santa Barbara that I um, that I worked with and it was That's far neat. out you know because uh -huh. you were responding to someone that you have never seen unless you were the first person I was not the first person uh -huh. I was responding but I really I enjoyed it uh -huh. I did a lot of collaboration for Thanks. some years, which was interesting as well. Well, collaboration well, can be, can be uh, nice because you, when you just bounce off yourself all the time after a while. You know, oh, yeah. You know, I was thinking, oh, yeah. I was thinking we should have brought a big pad and sat it on the table and made art here today, the three of us. Uh, exquisite corpse, right? Draw, yeah. kind of keep it going. And collaborate on one big drawing. Mm. Then that would have well, we didn't. been a real fight. Well, we didn't fight. do that. Yeah. And I never brought up the idea either. Uh, so I, I hardly ever draw anymore. Yeah, Rube. Right. I mean, I, I, for what I do, I, I'm drawing and painting. And, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's not like, it's just a lot of people, you know, drawing is always just something about, you know, you draw the thing and, and then you got the whole thing worked out and then you put it on the canvas and you draw it on the canvas. Yeah, I, 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 I can't I imagine never, that. No, I never did. I never yeah, did. I can't. I you can't. draw, right? You do draw. I draw, but I also compose on the computer. I do, I do right, kind of. Right, right. I, I draw, then I compose, and then I paint, and then I go compose again. and It kind of goes back huh. and forth. How, and how do you use the computer in that? Um, to, to create composition. Okay. You know, move things around right. quickly wow. and efficiently. Wow, wow, great. Photoshop. Yeah, I know. People keep telling me, I go, you should get a computer. 
It's real interesting how it it's affects your work, especially you know when you're an, an older artist. You because it's we're not native to the computer, right? We kind of had to learn it and accept right. it, and and it it is very interesting how it um, it's so quick for composition. That's what I like about. It. I can put something in, and then I can take it out, and then I can move it around, and it just goes so fast. I remember I used to do the same thing before the computer by cutting out pieces of paper and painting them a color and, and taping them up and then taking see what it looks yeah like. taking tape like black photographer's tape and cutting really thin strips and then yeah. making lines with them so I would kind of temporarily put it up actually on the painting and then tear it yeah. off and then put it back up but the computers made it very efficient yeah I could see that I a lot of things that I could use a computer for in yeah in my work and it's like and make it a lot easier. Yeah, you know, yeah, it does. But, uh, yeah, it does. Like a, I'm too old to get a computer now. Really? Huh? No, not really. Yeah. No, I need somebody else who has a computer. I'm not going to uh, go learn the whole. You just uh, boss somebody around. Stuff, yeah, just boss, just, just boss somebody around. around. Just, just stand behind the operator. Just stand behind their shoulder and say, "I don't want that there. Put it over." Yeah. Right. Move I it know, over. I know. I know. I know. I know. Be a director. You could be a director. Yeah. Well, that's. And then it suddenly felt silent. Well, let's well, see. We st should start praying now, We've, maybe. It, it is till we forgot to pray before our meal. What? Oh, this? Yeah. We didn't have sex before the meal. We didn't pray before the meal. What's going on? <laughs> well, everything is hot. I mean, it's really hot. Really? Uh, if you like hot food, this is the greatest place to go. Right. But, but, they're, they're but I'm not. <laughs> I never, uh, I never like. I, I'm the opposite. I like sweet things, because I grew up with a, with a, a grandmother that tried to take me over from my mother, and uh, fed me all these sweets. Now you don't have to eat your, your Brussels That's, sprouts uh -huh. here. Have another piece of chocolate cake, you know. So wow. I, oh yeah, I was, I was the only boy there. They were all, they were all women, and uh, my mother was a Cinderella story. They, my grandmother would put her down because she was trying to get her from me. It was during the d depression, and it was it was pretty uh, pretty screwed up, you know. So, do you think that affected your relationship to women, being being pulled, pushed and pulled by those two? Do you like being pushed and pulled by women? That's uh, the that's, question. That's another, ridden, that's ridden. Another, <laughs> that's another that's another story. Yes. <clears throat> you know, uh I think I became very uh, self-absorbed. Uh, the, the aunts would come over, frustrated with their husbands, and I'm this young boy, maybe I'm 12 years old or whatever like this, and I could always entertain or do something like this. And, I wondered and, where and, that was going. And so I always, <laughs> I always wondered, what, I always mistook, I always mistook, um, and they loved movies, they loved all this, and then they would say things like, oh, don't you think he looks like William Holden? Don't you think he looks like... Oh, good, so, good, so I'm sitting there thinking that, because I, I never, you gotta be nobody, a nobody kissed in my family, nobody hugged in my family. Right, so it was right, like, same here. The Families only love, know. the only love was if you were a star. I and I'd see. never gotten over it. Well, the rubber band is a way of uh, mm -hmm. coping with that, too. The rubber band? Yeah. Because music does take you outside. Music right. is for others, and a painting is just for yourself. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's so. At first. Right. Initially. It's you know what I think? First, uh, yeah. We're about done. And who's going to leave the tip? The tip? This is what I'm concerned about. Uh, I'll but, leave my food. You know, yeah. if... Uh, if uh, we'll just keep talking. Bob, the in, in, the, in the last... Well, we got to thank the... the uh, E third steakhouse here for this food. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's talk about sex. No, let's oh. talk. Yeah, you you haven't told us where you come from. Uh, Santa Monica. No, but I mean the parents. Oh, my yeah. parents. Nightmare. Okay, my dad was a beach boy from Venice Beach, and my mom's a Palestinian refugee. That's a, that's she lost. That's, her quite, that's a combo. That's yeah. a that's a winning combo. Right.